Hello guys, uh, good morning. So today we will be studying uh, some basic concepts on structural fasteners uh, pertaining to rivets and bolts. So the analysis and the conceptual uh, design of rivet and, and bolts are very very similar. No? Uh, the only the difference is that uh, the two are not of uh, the same uh, nature in terms of uh, the application of the fastening and the tightening. Uh, the clumping uh, uh, forces are actually uh, made uh, by using different uh, methodology as uh, uh, you can see later so for uh, the difference between a rivet and a bolt is uh, the, the the first okay the first uh, a figure here is actually a rivet uh, as you can see the the uh, the uh, uh, a rivet is a simple pin with a, with an enlarged uh, uh, head uh, so as not to to allow the the pin the shaft to to uh, go through the hole and the, the method of tightening it uh, is only used by simple application of pressure at the, on the other side okay and heat okay so we simply uh, put heat and pressure to uh, uh, enlarge no? the, the other side and produce a clamping uh, uh, force to, to the uh, the plates uh, that are being fastened while these two bolts here are made of uh, of head and shank upon which uh, there are threads no for the other end of the the uh, bolt length to be tightened by means of uh, nuts okay so that, that's only the difference between the two. So for the unfinished uh, bolts, uh, the term unfinished simply refers to the common bolts we can see from old uh, structures, wherein they use uh, a basically a a lower strength uh, uh, material. Uh, on the base of the ASTM standard. Okay, so this is an ASTM 307 uh, as your minimum st tensile strength uh, falling within the range of 6000 KSI. So we also have the rib bolts uh, which are made of, uh, of uh, raised ribs along the shank. Okay, so uh, if this is the shank uh, there are some protrusions on the on the shaft to allow a tight fitting uh, uh, connection as the, the bolt is driven inside the bolt hole we also have the different types of bolts according to strength we have the ASTM 325 490 wherein uh, these are alloy uh, sorry these are heat treated uh, medium carbon steel and this is uh, a heat treated alloy steel notice the the range of uh, difference between the values of fy and fu uh, we have a special type of bolt which is astm 449 in which uh, uh, larger diameters are actually being uh, manufactured or made okay so this is not uh, um, of the same alloy that was used 
on ASTM uh, 325 and ASTM 490 since it allows some uh, quench, quenching and tempering of the steel to form a larger diameter. So it's very difficult to, to, to produce a large diameter wherein uh, you're using a high, high carbon, high alloy steel, uh, just like ASTM AG25 and ASTM uh, 490. For the typical voltage connections, we have uh, actually uh, three types of connection, the shear connections, the eccentric shear, and the direct tensile or tension connection. So for the shear connections, we have the single shear and the double shear, in which uh, the only difference between the two is that the two uh, plates or members are lap together not to form a splice uh, the, the holes are drilled uh, to allow uh, bolts and rivets to go through it and uh, prevent uh, the separation of uh, the two members as uh, tension forces are applied along the longitudinal axis of the members for the butt joint, the, the splice plate uh, are actually present. There's a splice plate uh, present to see to it that your uh, members, uh, the plate members are butted or uh, butted together. They are aligned uh, to, to uh, see to it that the tensile force are also concentric uh, the the path of the tension forces are concentric with each other so for the eccentric shear connection the the uh, applied load producing the shear is actually uh, away from the the centroidal uh, or the centroid rather the center of gravity of the bolt group okay such that uh, this uh, individual bolts experiences different values for your uh, shear forces while the tension connections are actually carried directly by the bolts uh, in which the, the their axes are are parallel to the direction of the tensile forces. So this is a direct tension connection. We also have the combined shear and tension, wherein uh, this uh, uh, eccentric shear and tension connections are actually. Uh, mixed together to form a joint connection such as this one this one and this one okay so this is normally a corbel okay an angle bracket or a corbel uh, connection uh, this is a, 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 a tension plate connection And this is a shear plate connection. So other connections may be a moment plate connection. So if we, I have here a, a uh, an angle bar uh, that is bolted there and bolted here, so you can call this now a moment plate connection. Okay, the shear plates are more uh, familiar on the web, while the moment plates are more familiar in the flange of a beam column connection. Okay, so this is a, this is a bracket column connection. This is a, uh, a tension column, uh, con tension member column connection, and this is a, a uh, um, moment frame connection. So the possible modes of failure then are 
enumerated on the basis of the shear failure of both the bolt and the plate. So we have uh, 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 the shear failure of the bolt and the plate, the bearing failure of the bolt uh, and the plate, okay, the tensile failure of the bolt, so this is tensile bending, Uh, by the way, these two here are both on the tensile failure of the bolt and the plate. So we can uh, uh, remove uh, this part here. Okay, so we have two pairs of uh, tension, bearing, and shear, and we have one uh, bending of the plate. Sorry, bending of the bolt. And they are drawn actually here, so you can see the shear of failure of the bolt there. Okay, so this is a single shear. Okay, single shear. This is now the shear on the uh, plate. Uh, this is just like a block shear failure for a single bolt. So this is a bearing failure, no? So it, this crashes. Bearing of the bolt bearing of the plate so these are actually uh, spread uh, overlies or elongated no pole elongations we also have the bending of the bolt and the uh, tensile or tension of the bolt okay the bolt bends uh, the bolt elongates here we have also the tensile failure of the plate so this is uh, just like uh, the uh, area effective okay of the plate so let's go now to the transfer floats from one plate to the other and so how does a a, uh, a pin or a bolt or a rivet transfer the loads from one plate to the other so the basic mechanism is such that when you have two plates uh, locked together you simply make use of a hole okay on the two plates upon which a pin is inserted inside and it is not allowed to to fall uh, or to be uh, uh, pushed out of the hole by using a a, a a a lock okay a cutter lock cutter locks are are just uh, um uh, self-locking uh, washers that you place to prevent the pin from going uh, through the hole so if you take a look at the free body diagram, so the bearing of forces uh, on the sides of the plate are due to the to the uh, to the uh, uh, the tension force uh, or the compression force also uh, applied on the plates themselves will cause the bolt to push the plate the sides of the hole uh, in opposite directions. Therefore, inducing a shear uh, path or shear stress at this juncture. Okay. So at this point, uh, the the uh, capacity or strength of such a connection is due to the bearing of the ball and the shearing of the ball, and also the bearing of the plate. Okay. So those are the three. Uh, failure modes or limit state condition that we can refer to if you want to apply the uh, design philosophy for uh, this particular ball uh, design. So when high strength bolt is installed to have a specified initial tension, there will be an initial pre-compression between the plates A and B. So if you have a, a high strength bolt, in order to, to capital, capitalize on the capacity of the bolt, we need to 
or tighten no the bolt up uh, and so initial pre compression between the plates due to tightening of the bolts will now create additional uh, strength on the connection which is frictional in nature okay so the the uh, bearing uh, behavior that is uh, induced no, on the sides of the plate by the pin or the bolt uh, is now uh, relieved no? uh, the mere fact that friction has to be to be uh, uh, exhausted first prior to okay prior to the bearing uh, behavior uh, to proceed in such a manner this uh, type of connection uh, is known as uh, 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 a slip critical connection okay so a friction type connection is the basis for a slip critical connection in which uh, uh, no movement is allowed due to the strong frictional resistance between the plates uh, due to bolt tightening so if we have here two plates uh, a and b then this is a high strength bolt and this uh, bolt is tightened so as to produce a tensile force that will pre-compress the two uh, plates together uh, will actually create a frictional resistance e equal to mu uh, t where mu is the coefficient of friction between uh, the two surfaces so for the proof load uh, uh, and bulk tension uh, let's look into an example of an A325 uh, bolt with a hexagonal head. Okay, the uh, uh, bolt length is actually uh, referred to as the shank in your uh, definition of uh, A307 bolts. And of course, we have a thread length which is uh, actually. Uh, uh, dependent on the requirement of the the uh, movement of the nut on into how many turns the nut should be should be turned uh, for uh, a specific uh, bolt tension requirement so this uh, uh, length is actually measured in terms of uh, the number of uh, thread per inch okay so we have uh, also the pitch will determine the number of threads if the pitch uh, is uh, high i mean to say the okay the pitch is high then uh, your your number of threads is uh, smaller okay when the pitch is uh, low then the number of threads is is uh, uh, larger okay so it depends on how fine the threads are so when the bolts are fine threaded then there are uh, the the number of uh, a thread per inch is high but when the the uh, the thread are rough rough threaded then the number of pitch or the number of thread per inch is low okay so we will be using this uh, value of n later on the computation of the effective diameter of your thread or sorry of your ball so we have here a typical load versus nut rotation for an ASTM 325 and 490 so this is uh, plotted um, by 
actually applying a bulk tension uh, in terms of the number of uh, uh, turns uh, made on the on the on the uh, nut, okay, from a starting point which is called the snug. Okay, so the snug is actually the reference point upon which uh, your number of turns is measured. So the equivalent uh, bolt tension for a snug tight connection is actually 10, but this can actually be higher or lower depending upon the uh, nature of how the plates are are. Uh, place together no so the, the roughness of the plates okay so snug tightening is uh, a measure of some factors such as the roughness of the plate uh, the the straightness of the plate and the method okay used in the tightening okay so these are the the, the factors considered if the uh, surface is rough uh, then uh, the, the snug uh, uh, tension might be uh, bigger. No? You, you have to allot uh, a bigger value for the, for the uh, ball tension to place it uh, in a snug tight uh, condition. If the plates are not straight also, you need a bigger value for your ball tension to put it into a snug tight position. And also the method of tightening will affect uh, sometimes your bolt tension uh, as measured in terms of the number of turns. And I'd like uh, to, you to look at the bolt uh, tension uh, which is uh, measured in terms of the proof load. Okay, so this is now the proof load. And and this is equal to the minimum tension uh, of the bolt, okay? So this is the proof load. Uh, it's actually lower than 40. Uh, it's uh, 39, I think, uh, as uh, indicated on the table. I will show you later. And this is also below uh, 50, around the 48, uh, 49 on the table. Okay, so this is for your A490 ball. Okay, so you will notice that for um, A490 ball, the minimum tension and the proof load are not the same. So, because this is a high strength uh, a ball, then uh, the if we account for the minimum tension on the basis of the percentage on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, tensile strength FU, then your proof load in actual uh, test result will be greater than the the minimum tension bolt as specified as a as a as a percentage of uh, FU, which is I think a more or less seventy percent. So to take a look at the, what I'm trying to, to tell you, so we are now referring to A325 and uh, A490. So we these are the two most common since A307 is actually made of low carbon steel, which are the unfinished bolts that uh, we are using uh, in old structures. While A449 are special type of bolts uh, used for very very large diameter because uh, high strength bolts uh, A325 and A490 are difficult to manufacture uh, on la uh, using uh, large uh, diameters. Okay, so if you if you will, uh, look into this, the, uh, this can exceed actually uh, up to uh, 3 inches diameter okay so this is 3 inches uh, diameter so take a look at the A325 bolt in terms of your proof load 85 and A490 is 120 okay and then uh, this in this is in uh, uh, KSI 
stress so this is uh, 92 uh, in terms of yield strength uh, method okay uh, this is in terms of yield strength method and this is the the tensile strength fu uh, on the basis of uh, uh, direct tension test okay So when you say direct tension test, you put a specimen into the universal testing machine and uh, look into the uh, rupture strength or the ultimate uh, tension strength of your uh, bolt. Okay. So for your proof load uh, a computation that was plotted here, we need to look into... Uh, the area okay so if we take a look at the area here uh, the area to be used as your uh, uh, proof load area is equivalent okay to uh, 0.785 of uh, the diameter of the ball minus a certain value here which is 0.9743 over n okay so this is uh, what I'm talking about earlier on the number of threads uh, per inch, okay? Okay, this 0.8785 is simply the pi over 4 area of a circle. Okay, so this is for actual proof. For the... Uh, uh, yield strength method, uh, normally we use uh, the 0.2% offset and the 0.5% extension. Okay, so to get the yield strength. Okay, so if I have here my plot, uh, because there's no well-defined uh, curvature on the yield, or what you call the yield plateau, is not evident when you test the specimen of a bolt then you get the uh, uh, value of your yield strength by simply making use of an offset. Okay, so this is uh, a 0.2% offset on the strain such that you can come up with the intersection on the, on the graph. You now uh, have a basis for the determination of your yield strength. Also, the 0.5% extension actually correlates the 0.2% offset of your strain because uh, we know that extension and strains are simply a relationship with, between deformation and a unit deformation. Okay, so if I'm going to use now this area and I multiply it by, let's say, 85, I can get now my proof load, which is 39 here, uh, tabulated here by uh, the AISC on the basis of test. This AISC table J3. Okay, so we take note that if I use diameter 78 as was used in the uh, test uh, graph uh, made on ASTM G25 and 490. So this is uh, a 78, okay, diameter by 5.5 inch bolt. Okay, so this is now 7.8. Uh, if you get the area for 7.8 here and multiply it by 85, I have to get my proof load 39. Okay, and also for the A490, it's 49. So these two values here for the proof load were made on this basis. So I have here my 13, uh, 39 and my 49. Okay, so, but the, what I told you a while ago is that here, uh, this is the minimum tension uh, uh, value, which is not equivalent to the proof load that I'm talking about here. Okay, because uh, if I'm going to get the 70%, okay, as my minimum tensile strength of bolts, 
rounded off to the nearest cape. I have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, I will not over tighten the bolt. The danger of over tightening the bolt might yield to to uh, a, a pending or a potential bolt failure, as you can see on this graph. Okay, so this is uh, actually getting near, getting near uh, to the to the ultimate strength there. So if you are tightening it, assuming that your your uh, turns turn number of turn is actually within the range of one half turn from the snug from the snug. So we are referring it again on the base from the snug tightness. Then uh, we're, we we can never be sure that this will be very very near to this which is a very dangerous uh, situations when when it comes to uh, bolted connections that's why the AISC gives you only uh, a 70 percent allowance to to uh, make sure that your minimum bolt tension which is normally also the basis of your proof load is safer than the actual uh, proof load value obtained from uh, this formula here okay so this formula here so uh, this is the note that i'm talking about that uh, table 4.1 gives the actual proof load based on the stress properties obtained from 0.5 percent uh, length extension and 0.2 percent st strain offset under the load Okay, so this is now 0.2% and 0.5% extension. While uh, table 4.4.1 gives the minimum bolt pretension force for fully tightened bolts based on 70% uh, tensile strength. So notice this is Fu and this is actually implying an Fy. Okay, so whichever will give you, uh, sorry, F uh, U. This is F U. Okay, whatever will give you uh, the smaller value uh, compared to that of this formula here. Okay, so uh, if you will are going to take a look at this table, uh, this is. Uh, for 150 of 0.70 okay compared to the value of the yield or the proof load rather which is 120 then uh, you can see what, which is higher 70 percent of uh, 150 or uh, 120 so 120 is higher it's bigger that's why you will see here that the proof load okay based on the actual test is bigger than the minimum tension bolt which uh, serves as your uh, uh, a basis for your your uh, uh, tightness no snug tightness uh, in order to not to exceed okay uh, or not to reach uh, the the ultimate tensile strength of your ball in your design so naglagay lang sila ng ng counting allowance dito pero dito halos parehas siya no? so it will actually be very very near or when you use an A325 bolt, very dangerous when you use a higher uh, tensile strength bolt such as an A490. So for the bolt installation procedure, uh, whenever you have a slip resistant connection, uh, then uh, your your tightness must be the tightening of the bolt must follow some procedures uh, one two uh, 
uh, three. I think these are these are four 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 uh, different methods for tightening. But if you slip uh, uh, critical connections are not required, uh, you are permitted to to simply put the bolt into a snug tight uh, condition. And snug tightness is defined simply as the tightness upon which there exists uh, a condition when all the plies in the joint are in firm contact as, a, as achieved by few impacts of an impact wrench. Okay. So if you have an impact drill or an impact uh, uh, wrench, uh, you you can make sure that your um, uh, your bolt is snug tight uh, if you use uh, such uh, device, no? Just like when you are tightening the bolt of a car, so it must be snug tight. Or manually, it's a, it's a, it's a full effort of, a, of an iron worker using ordinary wrench. Okay? Uh, no, no extensions, no other leverage, no uh, use of uh, your own, your full weight to tighten it. Okay? It's an, uh, a full effort of using a, your hand by an iron worker, I mean, say, uh, you are really a, 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 a machine uh, worker, okay, which is uh, which has some knowledge on the uh, on tightening of uh, bolts and nuts. But when full pre-tensioning of the high strength bolts are required, the following methods must be used. The first one is the turn off the nut tightening method, okay, by just counting the number of turns of the nut. The calibrated uh, a wrench tightening method, wherein you are using a wrench that has some calibrations on it. Okay, uh, those are the torque wrenches. Uh, it can be manual or powered, and the variation in the bolt tension ranges from a plus minus thirty percent with an average of plus minus ten percent. And of course, some factors of safety and the precautions must be provided. And the third one is the use of the uh, yield type method or the installation of alternative design bolts. Um, and and there's one more I, I I have not included it here, but uh, there's a one more where indirectly your your uh, mm, tightness in terms of uh, uh, bolt tension can actually be observed no? while using that gadget. Of course, the, the equipment used on it is uh, very rare and uh, expensive. Okay, we have here also the, the, the graph of a bolt elongation uh, from a test joint from Fisher and Ransayer and Beadel. Okay, so we're in uh, the bolt tension versus the bolt elongation is actually now measured. And you will see that after a while, where in the bolt elongation is already has already reached a value of uh, around 0 .0, uh, more than 0 0.02, more or less, the the uh, tension of the bolt uh, will be uh, fixed uh, value, uh, while your elongation still. Uh, increasing okay so you can thought, think of this as uh, some uh, pl uh, plastic behavior happening while you are uh, turning the uh, bolt but of course this is uh, is this uh, good in, in a bolt uh, tightening uh, uh, this, this is not advantages are beneficial to the to the uh, uh, design because uh, elongation can actually reach uh, a value without increasing the the uh, bolt tension and therefore the clamping force is uh, already fixed at a certain range at any time uh, upon upon 
application of an additional load this may cause sudden rupture okay so for the graph uh, based on ramp and fissure uh, these are just the same 7 8 inch diameter bolt I think uh, what what the graph is showing us here is that at a certain point the number of turn from the snug tightness let's say one half turn will actually uh, give you a value of the bolt tension almost no? almost as high as the minimum tensile tensile strength of your bolt and this is very dangerous no? uh, in either cases you don't want your bolt to to reach that point wherein uh, it might lose its uh, strength as it further elongates and reach what you call rupture here so you might as well look into again the proof load as your basis for your <coughs> minimum bulk uh, tension Okay, if you are using a calibrated wrench uh, tensioning method, of course, you can actually uh, have a, a uh, more uh, reliable way of observing the data on how elongation and bolt tension are related uh, using the turn of the nut method okay so that's it for uh, the basic introduction of how bolts and rivets as fasteners are used uh, and uh, we will be dealing with some equations and formulas on the next uh, lecture so uh, i'll end my my first uh, the, this introduction at this point so thank you for listening and have a nice uh, day